Hey everyone, welcome back to our Swift UI series. Today we're going to be taking a look at sound. So I can enhance your app with sound effects as well as background music. We're going to be using AEV Foundation as well as some built-in system sounds, but also show you how to import some sounds of your own. So why does sound matter? Well, instant feedback, the tap feels more responsive with sound. We go ahead and press this one here. Don't worry, you did not just get a voicemail. I'm you know, just adding that little feedback. Better engagement, sound can delight users and improve retention. Uh, there's also guided interactions. Think the sound of pop sound and iMessage or clicking when toggling settings, as well as background music, which keeps users immersed in your app. By the end of this tutorial, you'll be able to add button sounds, background music, and built-in system sounds within SwiftUI. So let's go ahead and dive on in. But before we start coding, I'm just gonna show you a little bit more of the sample app. Uh, so we can play an imported sound for an MP3 I've added. Tell me if you know where that sounds from in the comments below. And this sound, which again was the voicemail one, there's actually a lot of system sounds that we can use and we'll be going through what all of those can be as well as the background music. Let's go ahead and toggle it. Alrighty, if you want to open up a new Xcode project, feel free to do so. Otherwise, you can add it to an existing one. We're gonna go on iOS app template. We're gonna call this one sound effects example, Swift UI language Swift. Go ahead and create. So we're going to actually create a new empty file here, and we're gonna go ahead and call it sound manager. If you wanna call it something else, feel free to do so, but this is where we're going to be kind of handling all of this sound within our app. I'm gonna go ahead and import AV foundation as we're going to be using it to handle the audio of our application. Okay, we're going to create a class to manage sound effects and background music. I'm just going to say BGM. BGM sits for background music. So our class is going to be called Sound Manager. Sometimes I might call this something like Sound Store, but Sound Manager should be good enough. We're going to create a static let, and we're going to say that shared equals sound manager with those empty brackets. We then create two private variables. The first one is the sound effect player. And if that's all you want in your app, feel free to just kind of follow the timestamps below. We'll say sound effect player. This is going to be an AV audio player. And we're going to use the question mark there. Then for the variable of our background music, we're going to do private bar. Let's call it background music player. This is also going to be the AV audio player. We'll use a question mark once again. So we're going to create a function and the first one is to play a sound effect from the app bundle. So we're going to call it play imported sound. Now I'm specifying that this is an imported sound because there are also those built in system sounds that we can use. So in this case, we're actually going to have a named sound name. Let's go ahead and do camel case for that. And it's going to be a string within those parameters. So after the brace, we're going to say if let URL equals bundle with a capital B dot main dot URL for resource. And we're going to choose this one with extension. So for the resources, this is going to be the sound name that gets passed through the parameters. For the extension, we're going to set this to be dot MP3. Now it is a string value, so we'll go ahead and wrap that up in a string. But essentially, we're going to be looking for the name, which is going to be passed through that sound name. And then the extension we're saying is a MP3. So make sure when you're adding a sound to your project that it has that extension. Otherwise, you'll have to update it or change it. Okay, let's go ahead and add a brace. And then after the brace, we're immediately going to add a do and another brace. So for our sound effect player, we're going to reference that sound effect player. And we're going to have this equals try AV audio player. Then we're going to add brackets. And we're going to do contents of so this first suggestion here. And then we're just going to reference that URL from our if let. So lowercase URL. On the next line, we're going to do sound effects player once again question mark dot we're also going to have empty parameters next to play after we've done that we're going to go ahead and add a catch outside of this brace we're going to add another brace hit return and we'll go ahead and print whatever that error might be and we'll say error playing playing sound and we can even interpolate that localized description so let's go ahead and do forward slash bracket 
error dot localized description just in case if anything goes wrong we can kind of figure out what's going on okay so outside of this if let so if you need to you can double click on the brace but essentially we'll be going two braces below we're going to add an else statement and we're going to print sound file not um, and then we can also interpolate the sound name just this way if we're like hey i'm trying to play you know pop.mp3 and the project can't find pop.mp3 this will help us identify that error so if you're just interested in setting up sound effects and they're imported you're pretty much good to go but while we're here let's go ahead and set up the background music let's say plays bgm when on so we're going to create a function here and we'll say toggle background music so we do need within the parameters to say is on colon pool. So we're going to use a Boolean value, or in our case is a switch that the user can turn on and off to opt into that background music. So within our function, we're going to say if is on, we're going to add a brace here, if let URL equals, you can actually even go ahead and up here and copy and paste this. It might save you some time. And instead of the sound name we're going to go ahead and set the resource to be something static and we're going to call this background dash music this means we're choosing this background music mp3 file so we still have that extension for the users to use so when we import it we're probably going to have to rename it all right after we've added that and added the brakes we're going to go ahead and say do another brace here i'm going to say background oh i think yeah my private variable up top background there we go background music player okay let's see if we can reference that yeah, that's much better although if we made the same spelling mistake over and over again it would have worked it's probably best to fix that now we're gonna have this equals try av audio player and then we're going to have the contents of url once again and this is where we can also augment things like the volume and the number of loops. Um, and we can actually make it loop indefinitely. So we're going to reference our background music player once again. We're going to then add question mark dot number of loops. We're going to set this to equal negative one. So this is going to make it loops infinitely, right? Unless the user turns it off, of course. Then we'll also adjust the volume. So we'll do question mark dot volume. And we can use 0 0.5 in order to play it at 50% volume. So if we find it's too loud, it's too quiet, right, we can adjust this accordingly. And the last thing we'll have to add, the last thing we're going to add is the background music player question mark dot play. Alrighty, let's go ahead and see why um the try errors thrown from here are not handled oh we'll be fixing that in just a moment which is right now so right outside of this brace from do we'll be adding the catch add a brace here and we'll say print error playing bgm we can also interpolate that localized error localized description i always just want to put localized description it's like before we're going to go to the end of the if let url so two below that print statement right there we're going to go ahead and say else and an opening brace background music player question mark dot stop all right so we should be good to go so we've handled you know resourcing the sounds we've also handled playing them uh, looping it the volume and if it's not turned on well then the background music player doesn't play at all and with this else statement here you know it's going to be able to stop as well the next question you have is how can we add this music and how can we update it well we can do so with the ui but in terms of adding background music and sound effects it's actually quite easy if you already have some mp3s that you want to add you can skip this next part using the timestamps below however if you do want to grab some free mp3s that are royalty free uh, so it was the minecraft villager from before you can head on over to pixabay.com. I'll put the links for all these in the description below. This has sound effects. It also has music. Um, I was also on opengameart.org and you can find some different sounds uh, even here on the kind of main page. There are some cool ones I was listening to. This one's called Path of Glory, apparently. 
but hey, might be a little bit too intense for our purposes today, but uh, you are able to click on these and download them. They're royalty free. There's also the audio library available on YouTube, which not only has music, but also has sound effects. Even if we wanted to switch for like a pop here, we're able to grab them for free. Oh, now it's, it's auto playing punch or pop. I don't know what that is. <laughs> so once you have your MP3s downloaded, even if they're not currently the correct name, we can actually just drag and drop them into our project navigator on the left side of the screen here. We can copy the files to the destination. In this case, this one's happy birthday, bossa nova, e jammy jams. I'm going to click and let go for a second to rename. And let's call it background dash music. So this has handled our background music. Uh, in the case of the villager, I've downloaded this one as Minecraft dash villager, you know, kind of curse name, and we'll do the exact same thing. So I'm going to go ahead and call this one ha.mp3. Huh so when we reference it in the code, we'll just have to say the string name of ha. Huh. Otherwise, our background music should be good to go. We've only given it one option of that. So let's hop on over into our content view and we're going to make the interface that the users can interact with to play these sounds. So one thing to note, if you're going to use the built-in system sounds, you're going to need to import audio toolbox. This is required for system sounds. Uh, in the structure, we're going to create a state private variable. And this is going to handle the is music on. Right, and send this to be false. Something you also might want to consider is allowing the users to disable sound effects entirely or sound at all throughout the entire app. For our purposes today, we're just going to do music on, but you can see Apple Intelligence is suggesting that as well. This is just a sample app. Let's get rid of the placeholders in our fee stack and let's add some text here. Uh, what this app will do, so play sounds and BGM. Even if you wanted to add a little, uh, you know, music note emoji in here, you totally could. Let's add that music. There we go. And let's set that font. Alrighty, let's go ahead and create our first button. Uh, this will be for the imported sound. So for this button, we're going to create it with the action, add the brace, and from here, we're going to reference our sound manager that we've created, dot shared, and we're going to play imported sound. We're going to reference that function we've created, and we called this one huh, H U H. Next, we'll give our button some styling, so we can say some text. You know, play imported sound. This one huh, if we really want to. We get some styling, so let's also make this one headline. Some padding around it, some foreground style, you know, the whole nine yards. Let's have this one be white. And we can add the background to be dot black. And as fans of the channel know, give me some of that corner radius. Cool, so we should be able to test this out. And it works. Every time we press the button, we get the sound of the villager or whatever sound you've chosen to include. That's pretty cool. Now, if we want to have a button from the system sound where we don't need a file, um, this is just something as long as we've imported the audio toolbox, we are good to go. Well, from that, we can do another button. And we'll add another action here, just as we did before, add our brace. And we're instead going to say audio services play system sound. Okay. And this is where we can actually just include an ID. So I'm going to put this as 1104. And you're probably like, well, how do you know what 1104 is? So I'm going to put this in the description below, but there's this is a GitHub page where you can kind of reference any of the system sounds that you would like to use. So in this case, if we scroll down, we can see like a thousand is new mail, right? We can even use the control F. So if you wanted to find the voicemail one, right? Uh, 1002 is the voicemail received. I think there's a couple more. 
um, 1015, right? They all have the descriptions and you can kind of just scroll through this chart to find out what you're looking for. Um, so let's go ahead and do the, you know, let's do new mail actually instead. 1302, I'm curious what that one sounds like. But this one should be the pop, just say. <laughs> so it's 1302. All right, let's go ahead and add some style for our button. So add our text here. And we'll say play system sound new mail. We can go ahead and copy and paste our uh, settings up here, but we'll, we'll probably change the color here. Maybe we'll have this one be purple. Maybe we'll have this background be green. Oh, well, that's kind of cursed. Okay, maybe I'll, maybe I'll have this text also be white. Yeah, that's much easier to see. So now if we play the system sound, don't worry, you're not getting spam with emails, I promise. Uh, but you can kind of play around with these and see if there's any that you like. A lot of these might be things that you're used to. Oh, what is spell? 1331. I'm actually very curious. Interesting. <laughs> Alrighty, so you can play around with them. And uh, if there's any that you really like, these are built-in system sounds that you can use. Let's go out of our button here and let's create a toggle. And this is going to control our background music. So we'll give it some text here. We'll say, you know, BGM enabled question mark. Still within those arguments, we're going to add a comma and we're going to say is on and we're going to reference the bindings. We're going to use our dollar sign of is music on. We can then add some padding here. Now we're going to handle the change. So we're going to do dot on change and in the brackets of is music on. Outside of those brackets, we're going to add a brace new value, one word, camel case in that's our sound manager dot shared dot toggle background music is on. And this is just going to reference that new value. So just as a heads up, this one was depreciated in 17.0. We can use on change with a two or zero parameter action closure instead. All right, because if we turn it on in our music, we can also still play that. Oh, I should probably change that one back. This one's very aggressive. Uh, we can still play our huh. Oh, um, we might have messed something up because it's not turning off, but it is restarting. Okay, let's go ahead and check our sound manager. Uh, it should stop playing. If it doesn't, you might just have to reload the content view. Let's go ahead and fix that so people don't get stuck in an infinite loop of the bossa nova. Happy birthday. Uh, we may have missed a brace somewhere. Oh yes, I think we did miss a brace because our if is on is capturing everything. So we need to close off this is on right before the else statement. I'm gonna go ahead and add an additional brace here and then we'll get rid of that brace at the very bottom. So now our if state, our if else statement makes a lot more sense. I'm surprised it didn't bounce back with an error. Let's head on back over to our content view. Let's turn on the BGM and when we turn it off, it, it correctly turns off. Okay, that was funny and everything else still works. So that's great. So now users can toggle background music off and on while still playing individual sound effects. So I'm going to put some links in the description below if you want to download or check out any of these websites, uh, the YouTube audio library. This is just something when you log into your YouTube channel, uh, you can actually just see it on the left side of the screen here. You don't need to create your own sound effects. You can either use the built-in ones or the sites that provide free sound effects and background music for any app. So to ensure a great user experience, always consider accessibility when using sound. Provide visual feedback along sound effects for users who are deaf or hard of hearing. Allow users to adjust volume levels in your app settings. Respect system-wide mute settings. Don't play sound if the device is muted. These simple changes make your app more inclusive for everyone. Now you've built an app with imported sound effects, built in iOS system sounds, and background music. Thanks for watching. <laughs> if you enjoyed today's video, leave a comment down below and subscribe for more SwiftUI lessons. Dream big and code bigger, and we will see you in the next one. <laughs>